Hello, Gil Jones here. So I got my control panel built yesterday. Got LED Blinky running. Started looking at the animation editor. And I got the idea that I could maybe leverage the X-Lights program that I'm uh, one of the main developers on to create animations for the control panel. So here's a, just a quick look at what the program looks like. So this is my my yard and my house. I've modeled my house in SketchUp and placed the models that are in my yard. And these are all like RGB pixel models and you can move them around wherever you want. And then you can create you know, musical sequences or animations. So if I do that, and just bring that on screen and then drop a butterfly effect down on the all house model. You can see how I can make all those pixels light up on the whole house at once. So I got the idea that I could do the same thing for my control panel as long as I could just convert our data format into an LED blinky animation file. So I started working on that this morning. So let me jump over to the other show folder I was working in. So this is where I've modeled my control panel. We have the ability to import a mesh. So that's how I got my control panel in here. And then I needed to make each button look like a light. So normally we would we would drop a single line of lights down. And we would use that to, you know, light a string on the house. So I just created a single bulb by saying that I only have one pixel. And then I went to move that in place so it looks like it's sitting in front of a button. You can zoom in on this too. Now right now it's just a tiny pixel, so we need to go down here to String properties, actually not properties, appearance. And make that something bigger, like I'll say 35, and then I'll say it's a solid circle. So now it's starting to look closer to a button. Put it right on top of the button. Center it. And then you could dial the size wherever you think looks good. You can see I'm still not on it. Anyways, I just need to get it close. So I've modeled all the buttons. You can see if I select the names, I've actually named them over here. So there's my pause button. There's my exit button. So since I've modeled them all, I'm going to delete that one I was just showing you for practice. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Say I want a new animation sequence, 50 milliseconds per frame. And I'll just hit quick start. I'm going to get some of these panels out of the way that I don't, don't need. Reorganize my panel layout. Forgot to save the perspective to the way I like it. And then the, the preview here will show show what's happening on the control panel. So I'll get that zoomed in where we can see it. So I can take the same thing, drop an effect down and the buttons will react. It's kind of like a bars effect. So put a bars effect down. Let's just say I wanted a 10 second bars effect. That's what I did this morning. And so I went through, kind of created a rainbow pattern. Picking which colors I want. Checkbox activates them. So 
the several colors. Say I want it moving to the right. And I'll make cycles three so it goes a little faster. And smooth it out into a gradient. And there I've got a nice rainbow effect moving across the control panel. Let me delete this other effect. Tell it that my sequence is only 10 seconds long. Make sure it's rendered. Hit save. I'm just going to save over rainbow test. So it created this .fseq file. So what I need to do to convert it is go in here to our convert tool. And this morning I worked on the code to do this. So we just created this FSEQ file. And I'm going to say I want to convert it to an LED blinky animation, start conversion, and it converts that fast. So that actually just created the file we need. So if I go navigate to where I was working, let's see, I had an LED blinky folder I created. You can right click and look at that file. And you can see it created the, the XML I need to, to run an animation in LED blinky. Now I just used the format that I had in one of my animations I created, so this probably only right now works with, I'm assuming that might stand for an Ultimark Ultimate I.O., which is what I have, and I just hard code all the values to one, because I think zero means the light's off. So I've got some stuff hard coded here. I would have to probably find out what all these codes are if I was going to make this a little more flexible for everyone. But it basically took our normal 255 0 to 255 data value and convert it down to a 0 to 48 range. And I, I moved this over to my arcade machine and imported it into the LED Blinky Animation Editor and ran it and it worked and actually, you know, I saw the same thing I saw on my screen here. Click that effect again. I saw this same thing on, on the real control panel. So this was just one effect, and there's a lot of other other options once you learn the program that you could do. Uh, let's see, like a morph effect. Drop that down. That kind of goes directional. Oh, I accidentally put it just on the trackball. Move it up to the group. So that one's right now going going from bottom to top. You can tell it to go left to right, full sweep right, and change what colors are happening on it. Changing the color panel. Uh, let's see, some other effects. Shockwave, kind of like an explosion from the center. That would probably have to make the radius bigger. You see it's kind of starting in the center and exploding now. Make the width larger. So just lots of things you can do. We have a simple on effect. Just turns everything on, a solid color. And you could you could create like a frame. T, oops, I got the time and track selected, hit T, and then I could drag down on effects to individual buttons if I want. So I could like click here on the trackball, hit the O key, change what color that is. Then once you have it, you could copy it and paste it to other buttons really quick. You could Grab all these effect edges, 
hold down shift and then you could change their durations or you could copy paste it somewhere else you can grab all of those once they're highlighted hold down alt key and then stagger them so that when it plays it staggers it's just just tons of tons of options of what you could do in creating an animation once you learn the program so i guess i'll you know let people take a look and see if there's any interest in trying to polish this up so that other people could learn how to use it so i hope you enjoyed the video next i'm going to add on a clip that just shows the uh, rainbow animation I created playing on my on my uh, actual arcade panel. So I'll talk to you later.